Often when I'm talking with students about geography, particularly its mapping in GIS traditions, someone will ask, well, don't we know where everything is? Or hasn't everything been mapped already? And the answer is clearly no. No, we don't know where everything is. Uh, we don't know where everything was, and we don't know where everything will be. Uh, geologists and physicists are still making great discoveries about Earth's history. Uh, archaeologists and geneticists are still making great discoveries about human history and evolution. Uh, we know that the Earth and the climate are changing, and there are many changes that will happen in the future that we just don't know yet. Uh, so clearly we don't know where everything is. Consider this construction site as an example, just one little example. Uh, this is a 185 acre piece of property that is being subdivided into 683 new home sites and 26,000 square feet of new commercial and retail space. It's a big piece of land and it's being chopped up in a lot of little pieces. New roads are being constructed, new infrastructure is being laid, new people will be moving in. But just 10 years ago, this 185 acre piece of property was owned by the Hess farm and used as farmland. Now, if we go back in time, back to 1937, uh, that's the oldest aerial photography we have. Uh, we can see that this same area wasn't one large farm, but a dozen small family farms that had yet to be sold and consolidated. When I look at this construction site, I see more than a dozen future mapping needs. And among the first I think of are our emergency responders, our firemen and policemen. You know, they're going to need to know where every one of these new addresses is located because each one represents a potential service call. Uh, each address is going to be marked or mapped as a point defined by a coordinate pair and assign attributes like landowner name, landowner phone number, uh, the physical address, when was the house built, uh, and other attributes. You know, uh, the firefighters are also going to need to know they're going to add the new fire hydrants to their database. Uh, the, each one being mapped as a point defined by a coordinate pair and attributed with attributes like a hydrant maker, a hydrant model number, the installation date, and the flow capacity, among other attributes. When I look at this construction site, what I don't see are telephone poles and power lines. And that's because that infrastructure is being buried underground along with the natural gas, water, and sewer lines. And when you take the kind of infrastructure we're used to seeing above ground in older neighborhoods and you bury it underground, uh, you create a communication problem for when the next construction project is going to happen. And so that's why the developer, the contractors, the new homeowners, the utility companies, and the Pennsylvania One Call system need to coordinate uh, and communicate about the location of this buried infrastructure. And they do that with data-driven maps. The uh, electrical switch boxes, the transformers, the uh, shutoff valves, and other junctions will be mapped as points with attributes. And the segments of pipe and cable will be mapped as polylines. State agencies like PennDOT and global map service providers like Google Maps and Apple Maps will be eagerly digitizing this new street network uh, to make uh, navigation, wayfinding, and planning a lot easier for millions of users. Uh, you can easily imagine mapping th these streets as center lines because uh, that's a very simple geometry uh, and it gives you the shape length. You can also assign attributes like street name, uh, the road surface type, is it gravel, is it asphalt, is it cement. Uh, you can assign attributes like speed limit, uh, uh, the last pave date, and, and other attributes like that.
you know, Google and Apple will use the shape length and the speed limit to help calculate or estimate the travel time between the origin and destination that you plug in in your map app. Uh, you know, and then once that's done, Google and Apple will send out their camera cars uh, to start collecting the new street views. Local municipal authorities are going to be concerned about how this land is being modified. Uh, particularly, they're going to be concerned about uh, how the topography is being regraded and how much of this once permeable farmland is going to be covered by impervious surfaces. Because uh, when you regrade and you cover land with impervious surfaces, you can change the local drainage pattern. And when you do that, you can create potential problems for downstream neighbors or overwhelm the local stormwater system. So you can be sure the local MS4 coordinators are digitizing every uh, street segment, every alley, and every driveway, not using the polylines that PennDOT, Apple, or Google are using for routing, uh, but using polygons so that they can use the shape area attribute to figure out how much area has been affected. Uh, they're also going to be performing terrain analysis using a digital elevation model so that they can calculate hill slopes and they can model flow direction and flow accumulation. Like I said earlier, when I look at this construction site, I see more than a dozen mapping projects and future mapping needs. Uh, and what I need you to do is to consider this site with its 683 new homes and 26,000 new square feet of commercial and retail space as just a little example. Because now we need, I need you to multiply that in your head of all of the construction sites like this one that exist across the county, across the entire commonwealth, across the entire country. That is a lot of landscape change. That is a lot of new stuff that needs to be mapped. All right. Now I'm going to ask you to think about all of the forest fires that burn down houses or even complete towns if we're talking about the wildfires out west. I need you to think about the hurricanes that, battle, that batter coastal properties. I need you to think about the spring floods that create swollen rivers that destroy houses and barns uh, and other infrastructure. I think if you can imagine all of those additions and subtractions and changes that are constantly happening all around us, uh, I think we'll agree that geography's mapping tradition is alive and well and that we'll be using geographic information systems to map human and natural resources for a very long time to come.